Hello, thanks for watching another random palm reading. I don't know a great deal about this person, although I do know they've been waiting for their palm reading for a very long time. Now, immediately, what I notice between, um, what really stands out to me is the thumb, actually. It seems to be, uh, the angle is, you know, not too far away. It's relatively low set, looks pretty stiff, but the angle is a little bit close. So, let's see what this says about it. Also, there's the matter of the middle fingers. They are close together on the right hand. She's a team player. This is a hand of a team player. And also, David Brandon Jones would categorize this person as an analytical hand. Notice the palm itself is certainly rectangular. The fingers are uh, conic to rounded. You have to categorize in the system of four. This, this lady is a fire hand. But um, the, the fingers aren't quite, you know, on the short side. Now, the heavier the knuckles, the, the thicker the uh, knots of the uh, knuckles on an analytical hand, the more awkward the personality. You know, it provides a sort of quirky charm for a lot of um, analytical types. We're not seeing so much of that here. It is certainly um, a bit of a mix. The fingers themselves aren't, you know, they're a good width. Uh, in comparison to the palm, this shows someone who has uh, quite a strong personality. Um, so there's the, the the fiery element to this person is is quite well mixed in with this very sort of analytical approach. Stronger the angle of time or proficiency in an analytical palm, the more they uh, tend to rely on routine and order. The smaller or the less defined of this angle then um, the more sort of oppressed they can become and feel about uh, red tape. Now, on the left hand, the fingers in general are quite evenly sort of splayed outwards, and it shows, again, this sort of quite vibrant personality um, inherently, who she is as a person. It's someone who is quite sort of um, willing to put herself out there, put her personality out there, willing to explore a little bit of adventure. So, again, this goes against that kind of red tape um you know the feeling of um being oppressed by rules uh, although there is a certainly a need for order being so practical being so analytical and that is certainly seen by the strength of the, a very straight and long headline and i'm going to go into that as well as well as the, the heart line there's a a nice distance between both the head and the heart line throughout and that's interesting as well but these fingers overall show a kind of a cautious but keen explorer if that makes sense now on the right hand the differences here are quite stark as i say we've got the middle fingers that are quite close together a big difference to the right hand in the natural sort of finger leanings as well and it, it appears that mercury you know veers away a bit more and that's because of the way apollo leans in more towards saturn so there's a being the the right hand being sort of what's showing us uh, you know materially practically physically on the outside this person is having to conform to working as part of a team in order to uh, make ends meet and that's what the right hand is showing us here the other thing i notice in terms of the fingers is the length of jupiter notice how it's shorter on the left than it is on the right only just a bit longer on the right and it shows this person's confidence uh, self-esteem self-worth has grown um, in recent times and and um, that's a really positive sign you know, the thumb I find really interesting with this person's problem because the heart line, as well as in conjunction with the thumb, is showing me that this person is in some way at odds with how they make their decisions, or not wanting to be swayed by their emotions when making decisions. So here's an interesting one. Your thumb, if you've got a very sort of straight thumb that doesn't curve, the curvature of your thumb, and I'm not talking about flexibility, but if it's very straight, then you're highly analytical. We're looking at an analytical palm here. It sort of wants to curve a little bit. If you have a curved, a very curved thumb, it shows someone who is very sort of um, emotionally motivated, passionate. They feel strongly about um, the where they place their will, if you see what I mean. Someone with a, a sheerly straight thumb is able to impartially uh, make decisions and would work and especially in an analytical and um, would work very well in the area of um, psychology academia 
uh, and, and working with and around how the mind works. Someone with a strong curvature of the thumb needs to get behind, needs, needs to have a strong feeling, a desire to um, want to do their work. You know, there needs to be some, some, something that's motivating them quite personally. Now, the thumbs are hugely important in palmistry, and I don't talk about them all that often. And in this case, I find this one really interesting. So I'm going to divulge a little bit here. The thumbs are, uh, show our ability to assert our determination, um, our willpower, and to oppose um, our en environmental obstacles and to, to make changes in, in the wider world. And when we see a thumb that's sort of resting inwards uh, against the palm like this, it sort of seems um, like it's out, out of sync somehow. And it could be that it's just that in, in this case, this person would be feeling quite sort of cautious, a bit nervous at the time the photograph was taken, and it's a bit unconscious. Their, their willpower is in some way being compromised potentially by what I might be able to um, return from looking at their palms. They might be quite nervous, and, and that's possible. However, if your thumbs are looking something like this on a permanent basis, they're kind of, you know, a, just sort of facing inwards a little bit. They might be a little bit sort of limp, uh, hanging closely inwards towards the palm on a more permanent basis. If that's the case with this person, it could well be because of a, a diaphragm issue. So here's, here's an interesting thing about the thumb. The connection here is both... Uh, both psychological and physiological, because the thumb, as I say, it shows us how we assert our will. Now, if there's something, a driving force behind um, behind that uh, ability to dominate our own ideas and, our, and the way that we carry ourselves uh, in the world, th there could be um, that we've relinquished control to uh, something else. And in this age of AI and um, you know devices we've we've we have relinquished a lot of control. It could be it's a sign of um, a dominating um, partner. Not necessarily that could be uh, just the routine or um, the the way in which they live their lives. Um, there could be uh, these aren't fairly wound together. Uh, it could be that they're sort of stuck in a rut in, in the way that they live their lives and, or maybe overbearing parent. In any case, what can change this angle of this thumb is fear. That's, um, you know, what, what's causing that fear could be any, any number of things. It, it could be conspiracy theories. It could literally be the government. You know, it could be um, mass media or any of the other things I've just mentioned. So this is in some way a fear response, whether it's temporary or, or permanent. As I've mentioned, when I took the picture, it could just be a very temporary thing. So the things that can stop us from carrying out, enacting our will, what we um, are determined to carry out, is is either fear, it's normally fear, or distraction, indecision. Uh, someone's taken away our power. It could even be as simple as someone has de-skilled and taken away a person's ability to um, face challenges. If that's the case, then a person would be, um, you know, forced into a life of habit and um, having, you know, having a life made too easy for them. And then in that way, sort of feeling sort of stuck in a rut. We need challenges to uh, enable us to uh, empower, change, grow. So the answer here is some... Uh, reablement, some thumb reablement. It's a made up word. So, in this case, if this person's thumbs are in fact um, leaning like this on a permanent basis, then there is some um, rehabilitation required, some strength training in terms of um, challenging their will. Now, if this is you, you'll notice if you have to. Give yourself a thumbs up. Now, if you have to struggle to kind of, um, you know, pull that thumb upwards against away from um, the, the palm's fingers, then you, you'll you'll know that this is you. Might sound a little bit daft, but by 
literally raising your thumbs and straightening them out away from your th fingers and doing this as, a, as an exercise in some way um, subconsciously uh, strengthens your ability to enact out your own ideas it strengthens your will quite literally and there's another way of doing this and i had mentioned earlier the thumb is connected with the diaphragm our uh, lung uh, lower lung muscles if you like so here's another exercise for you and uh, it might seem a bit strange but it's quite a powerful one breathing can have such dramatic knock-on effects on our mind and body and this this one when you're doing this if you are going to do it, it's best to do it from uh, the from the lower uh, regions of the lungs. Really, use your um, your gut here when you when you breathe. So, hold your palms uh, face up like this, and take a deep breath. And as you do, curve your thumb inwards towards the palm. Breathe in. As I say, use your diaphragm. Really use those lower muscles that you you're not used to engaging and this could be part of the problem and when you uh, breathe out breathe onto your thumbs and release and disengage away from the fingers and uh, relax think about what it is that you want to do and and repeat this process breathe back in again move your thumb back closer to the palm and breathe back out, breathing into your thumb. And as you do, each time you do this, each time you repeat this process, you'll find your thumb can uh, regain some flexibility. And you'll also find you feel a bit more powerful. Now, the third thing to mention here is that if this is in fact a, a full on uh, permanent inability to move this thumb it could well be linked to the inability to use the diaphragm altogether it could be perhaps even there's a direct fear response with breathing if this is the case it's something a bit more profound and i'm going to uh, put some information in the description of this video as to how best to combat that because i don't want to spend too much time talking on the thumbs today but i thought it would be interesting to um utilize this experience to really um explain and talk a bit more about thumbs because they don't get talked about enough in palmistry i'll also chuck in a couple of breathing exercises for anti-stress now on that note of stress there's certainly a little bit of frustration here we see the, the horizontal lines on the thumbs here this shows a little bit of frustration we see it on the left as well and not an incredible amount but it's certainly internal as well as external the differences in the left and right hand are in the headline because if we look there's a, a strong sort of branching towards the end it's very long and the long headline is certainly um, associated with people who their decisions affect the lives of many but also it's our ability to um, the amount of time it takes to make a decision the longer the headline the longer it takes us to make that decision and that's generally because it's how we process information. It's not really got anything to do with intelligence, but when we see a headline that uh, forks like this at the end, uh, it can uh, provide extra indecision. Now I've already talked about indecision uh, regarding the thumbs with this person as well. Um, what the fork also allows us to do, and this is in a very sort of introspective, this is internally now, we're looking at the left hand, it provides us with an extra ability to see things from more than one angle and that can lead to indecision because it can sometimes put us on the fence we see one perspective we see another we don't know where to go i think the other thing of note here is there's a slight disconnect between the life and the headline this is known as the mark of the tiger it's larger on the right hand as well so this person has become more impulsive over time they've become more of a person who leaps before they think the headline on the right hand is also not as complicated. It is slightly shorter as well. So again, they have um, in some way become a bit more sort of impulsive. And what I said earlier about uh, an analytical person either being um, very sort of red tape oriented or uh, the, having a need for adventure and exploration, this person is moving more towards the latter 
That is also noted by this allergy line here. It notice how there's many names for this line, and um, an escape line is even one of the terms for it. There's a need here, a drive here. It, it rises out towards Luna, a place of imagination, fantasy, um, travel, restlessness, uh, you know, high sort of subconscious activity. The lunar mountain itself is not overly well developed. So this is this is certainly more a, a practical need to literally physically get away. The Mercury finger, as I've already said, it leans away both the left and the right hand a little bit here. We, this is someone who is quite willing to uh, have the need here, drive here to uh, get out of their environment. And I've also mentioned there's a feeling of you know being stuck in a rut a little bit as well. The gap, the space in between the head and the heart line is quite a wonderful thing because it's so even throughout. And it shows um, quite a warm nature. It shows an open heart and an open mind. Notice as well, the lifeline, the direction of it in the left hand, it shows us um, the direction in which this person wishes to take in life. We're looking at the left hand. And it's, it's bold. It's straight. It, it's shooting right out towards um, almost uh, Pluto here. You know, it's, it, it shoots out towards the center rather than wrapping around the thumb tightly. So it's showing a, a desire, an inner desire here to uh, explore, make bold moves and impact on the world. Now, what's really interesting here is that the right hand lifeline takes a very different turn. Notice how it's, it's, it's firing out into an even more uh, bolder direction. This person had um, plans lined up where they were going to explore. They were going to see the world. They were going to do things, make a difference. And everything changed for this person, it seems. You know, it's almost as if the fate line inter interjects with a lifeline here. So it's an odd angle and it takes a very dramatic turn. And it shows that although this person has still moved outside of um, their comfort zones, they're still highly independent, they've still made big decisions um, about what they wanted to do. Their life has taken a dramatic turn at a certain point, and 27 on the left hand actually shows us a bit more than on the right. We've got here some uh, deep ambitions here. Um, 16, we can certainly see some uh, strives towards academia, that's likely GCSEs. 27 or so, maybe even a little yeah, I'd say 28, perhaps. We've got some um, achievements here, uh, but more than that, an effort towards a deep feeling of ambition here. And so there was a decision made uh, at this time that uh, about what it is they're going to do. And it was a decision to um, have more freedom. And I can, say, I can say that safely because of the way we've got here. This is um, a drive determination. It, it drives up towards mercury a place of communication and expression which is also leading you know towards freedom as well it coincides with this ambition so it's all linked as this line rises up it kind of seems to um affect the uh, career the career line again here at that age of 27 it's sort of weakened by an influence close to the family or at least support there was something that occurred here at 27 and it was a difficult now we can see here look the headline where this um wow it's becoming a bit clearer where this event or occurrence happened when it uh, was you can see an island here on, on the headline. You can see how difficult this was, how strenuous this was on, on this mental uh, health of this person. At 35, things that seem to pick up. I don't believe this person was out of a job through any of this point. I just think that their career was immensely difficult um, from the age of 27. Um, and actually, after 35, even, this was still difficult. We've almost got an island forming here as well. I think money was really tight around the age of I don't know how old this person is. So I could be talking in terms of the future now, but um, let's see, 38 to 40, 
37 to 39, money looks difficult around that time. In terms of a career, we can see here the fate lines are this this primary fate line rises from Neptune, a place of captivating an audience and um, impacting on others in a, in a way that is inspiring, and and then we also see the fate line rising from mid lunar quite strong this is quite an intense feeling about what it is they want to do i think they had aspirations here to um to write or to act perhaps potentially sing this is in general here we have a fire hand um although jupiter is not that strong so i'm thinking this is more around something that's performance based um, not not so much singing but something more around acting perhaps writing because this is known as the writer's fork after all so there's there's a, a need here to have an audience to display some sort of um ah, but then luna is not all that strong amount so perhaps it's not creative perhaps it's something around helping others because when a fate line comes from luna it's either working with or working for others and looking for other signs and clues in the palm you'll see exactly what that is after a time i'm thinking this is more um they they had aspirations to help others bold aspirations to get out there into the wider world and to really make a big difference and to help others now that i've seen in uh, several things that i've already mentioned about this person's headline their lifeline and now their fate line as well their heart line is quite interesting because it's on the straight side. So um, this is someone who is able to make decisions without their emotions getting in the way. But also notice how the heart line, it's, it's on the long side. It reaches up, almost up on towards Jupiter, just about reaches up on towards Jupiter, certainly in between Jupiter and the Saturn fingers. And it forks as it does. So this person's... Um, love language is quite um multifaceted they are sentimental um they're deeply feeling deeply caring they're idealistic at the same time as having quite a strong uh, physical need for affection as well from 42 onwards this person's career really starts to take shape it's much much stronger i've just i've just noticed here we have here at 20 remember i was talking about 27 there was um probably became harder there was an impact here if you notice this line it's not fully formed but it sort of rises up towards uh what looks like a line branching down from the heart line and it's connected with the mercury line this is a health issue i think 27 there was support from the family at this time this was likely a karmic year it could have been an appendix issue, something in that region. Hmm. This person just um, comparing the differences between the left and the right hand here in terms of um, rear money. The person is certainly earning enough, but their money is disappearing just as fast as it comes in. This again is, you know, more evidence uh, towards someone who is a bit sort of stuck in a this. Uh, need here there's a holiday need here at the time this picture was taken certainly eyesight might be an issue for this person but there's one really interesting takeaway here and that is this just here it's it's certainly deep and profound and isolated enough to have quite a strong meaning i think anyway so So I'm going to summarise here, and I'm finding it a bit of a strange one. It's not the easiest of paths to conclude on. So I'm getting some mixed messages, but I'm just going to say, first of all, I think this person had begun life almost as though, as though their fate was decided for them. It's likely that their parents had an idea about what it is that this person should be doing. Maybe they were... 
um, recruited into the family business. Maybe their parents had an idea for them to uh, go down a certain route because of a certain talent that they may or may not have had. I think this person broke away from the decision um, that was made for them. They um, potentially, I might be wrong about that because of actually the thumb issue here, um, you know, they, there is a feeling of being stuck in a rut. I've said it a few times now. And I think this person at the time this picture was taken was feeling a bit frustrated about the relationship they're in at the moment, at, the, at, the, at this time. I think 27 or 28 was a really big turning point in their life. And I think 42 will also be a massive turning point in their lives as well. It's funny how our karmic years tend to be in intervals of seven. This need to travel is it's manifesting physically now within this person. It's It needs to be heard. There's a thirst, a hunger here. And without it, we will starve. We will become dehydrated. It, the, the, it will in some way manifest, if not healthily, then unhealthily. So... That needs to be answered and actually being able to enact her own will might well cure this this need of of escapism so there's that absolutely but this square on the tip of apollo here it's not it's almost fully formed i would say it's enough here to comment on it's a strange one because i've already said you know lunar mount they're not uh, incredibly developed. They're not well, not the kind of developed lunar mount I would expect to see from a creative individual. However, they're not underdeveloped either. And there are aspirations here to um, work with others. I'm, I'm caught between what this person uh, wanted to do in terms of their own ideas about their, their purpose in life. And... I'm coming back to it again. I'm not sure if it is something they, they wanted to have some sort of audience and impact the world in that way because there are signs that they care strongly about others. Apollo and Saturn do tend to lean in towards each other just about. There are no real good Samaritan lines or healing stigmata lines. So I'm not entirely certain what it is this person wanted to do, but there's certainly indecision around how their life was managed with their career i think they sort of chopped and changed quite a bit within their roles maybe they're still well doing that in any case a creative outlet is a must for this person because this square right here it's quite an odd signifier and it goes against some of the things i've already said Squares in palmistry, it's known as the mark of poi, I believe, in Tibetan palmistry, a, a safe place to land. I think that's what it means. And it certainly means a safe space in palmistry. Yeah, squares are protective. They close things in and uh, isolate um, incidents or accidents um, or isolate the person themselves from um, harm from mistakes and from error. And that's what this uh, represents. The tip of Apollo here, the ring finger, it shows us how we appreciate beauty and, um, and our artistic ability. And so this square here is protecting this person's ability to apply their talent and potentially genius and I say that because this person is very clever. You know, that red line is immensely long, as well as a very long Mercury finger as well. It's somewhat low set, and yet it still reaches above and beyond the first phalanx of Apollo. This is someone who has actually a great deal to give, to provide, to show to the world. And I believe they are in some way inhibited. They're not quite allowed and enabled to do this they are protected however by this marking in their ability to um, measure 
the way in which they pursue um, this, the ideas of, of their, their genius. I'm not going to go too much into creativity here because I don't, I mean, certainly the headline, it reaches into Luna. So there's a signifier of high creativity, strong, high imagination. It reaches high into Luna. So we're not looking at a place of, you know, fantasy, a deep and dark and powerful subconscious uh, imagination, so much as um, we're looking at um, a very constructive form of uh, creativity, a very practical and analytical way of utilising their creative um, faculties. The headline also flicks upwards here as well. There's a strong desire to make money. Unfortunately, this necessity, this tool in life is really um, quite a powerful um, rudder in, in terms of um, their where they place their efforts. I think this person has a strong idea about what it is they want to do. They, they literally have an excellent idea and they are keeping it up here. They're storing it safe. They're keeping their cards close to their chest. And when the time is right, they're going to um, buy that patent. They're going to uh, invent there's something there. And um, this, this idea, this plan, there's a reason why they're keeping it close to their chest. I don't quite feel safe enough to um, reveal it yet. So that's kind of sad, actually. So I wish this person all the best. And I think they will, so long as they have... Um, a, a way of reabling their will and um, rehabilitate some sort of self empowerment and have access to the freedom they require in order to uh, carry out their their ideas and um, in show the world who they are. I think they will be a much happier person and probably make quite a bit more money as well. So that's it for this person's poem reading. Let me know what your thoughts are. Perhaps you're an analytical poem as well. Perhaps you've got this sort of uh, slightly inward facing, um, you know, sort of a, a limp or held in closely, um, close leaning in thumb there. I'm not talking about the angle. I mean, literally the way that the thumb is kind of disengaged slightly from, from the second phalanx. And if that's the case, perhaps some of the exercises that I've mentioned in this video and in the description are relevant to you. Let me know what your thoughts are there. Um, I wanted to kind of get into the thumbs a bit more. Uh, a lot of people um, are not all that interested in thumbs, but they say a great deal about us. And in fact, in a big way, the thumb is uh, an embodiment of what all of the fingers in the palms show us it's our temperament it's our character and um, our ideas and how we are able to action them thanks for watching this video on this random palm reading i have no idea what this person will say about what i've said and um or what you're going to say thanks for watching please like please subscribe and i will see you on the next one